Hi. Now what we have is a straight line given by this equation. The straight line is called L1 then. And we're given that the point A has position 4i plus 16j minus 3k and that the point P lies on L1 such that AP is perpendicular to L1. And what we've got to do is find the exact coordinates of P. So if you haven't done this and you'd like to give it a go, I'll give you a moment or two just to pause the video. When you come back, you can either fast forward to the end to get the uh, answer, or I'll give you the detailed work solutions for this. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So, first thing I'd want to do is just draw a quick sketch of what we've got. So, I'll draw part of our line L1. And we're told that we've got this point A with position vector 4i plus 16j minus 3k. It's not on the line, so we'll have our origin there, and this is our point A. So if it has position vector 4i plus 16j minus 3k, then it's going to have coordinates for 16 minus 3. And there's our position vector for it. We're also told that we've got this point P on the line here, such that A to P is perpendicular to the line L1. Now, we've got to find the coordinates of this point P. So I'm just going to say that that point P has coordinates X1, Y1, Z1, say. Okay? And what else do we know? Well, we've got to find its coordinates, so we're bound to need to find its position vector as well at some point. Now to do a question like this, what I need to do then is just build up some simultaneous equations. And the first place that we start is the fact that we know that this point lies on L1, so it must satisfy this equation here. So we'll just write that in here, that since x1 y1, z1, okay, lies on the line, lies on L1, then what we can say is that that position vector R must take on this position vector OP. So we've got, if I just write it as column vectors as well, we've got then that column vector x1, y1, z1, must equal 913 minus 3, 913 minus 3, plus lambda in the direction of 1, 4, minus 2. 1, 4, minus 2. Okay, remember that's the direction vector for the line. In fact, it's well worth us putting it in. That's the direction vector. Say it's like that, okay? And it's the vector i plus 4j minus 2k. We're going to need that part later on as well. Now, what we can see from here is that we could build up the simultaneous equations, that is that x1 equals 9 plus 1 lambda, or just simply 9 plus lambda, We've also got on this second line here, when we compare the j components, we've got y1 equals 13 plus 4 lambda. And finally, if we compare the k components, we've got z1 equals minus 3 minus 2 lambda. Now, we've got four unknowns, x1, y1, z1, and lambda. Four unknowns requires four independent equations. We've only got three so far. One, two, and three. So where do we get our fourth one from? Well, we build our fourth one from the fact that AP is perpendicular to the direction vector of the line, i plus 4j minus 2k. So we know that this vector, AP, let's mark it in as a vector, AP, or even PA, it wouldn't matter, but this vector dotted with this vector here would equal zero, the perpendicular rule for vectors. 
So I'm going to need to work out AP first of all. And to get AP, let's just put it down here also, A to P is going to equal O to P minus O to A. If we're going from A to P, you've got to go down here. That's minus OA plus OP. So we can write it in this form, O to P minus O to A. It's a standard result anyway it should be familiar with. Okay, so we've got that. So O to P we know is X1, Y1, Z1. So we just put that in as X1, Y1, Z1. And then we've got to minus OA. And if we minus OA for I, 16J minus 3K, then we're just going to have X1 minus 4 in the I direction, Y1 minus 16, Y1 minus 16, and Z1 minus minus 3, so that's Z1 plus 3. Okay, and if we now put in our values for X1, Y1, Z1 in here, we're going to get a new vector. So X1, we've got 9 plus lambda, minus that 4, is going to give us 5 plus lambda. For Y1, we've got 13 plus 4 lambda, minus 16, gives us 4 lambda, minus 3. And then for Z1, minus 3, minus 2 lambda, plus the 3, gives us minus 2 lambda. Okay, so we'll just put that there. We could say that we were taking this from 1, 2, and 3, okay? Now, we've got our vector A to P. And I said that this vector dotted with A to P would equal 0, the perpendicular rule for vectors. So let's just put this in here. But if we take that vector I plus 4J minus 2k and we dot this vector then with a to p it's going to equal 0. So in the usual way then if we dot these two vectors we've got 1 here, 1i, one, 1 multiplied by 5 plus lambda so therefore 1 multiplied by 5 plus lambda plus then we've got 4 here multiplied by 4 lambda minus 3 4 times 4 lambda minus 3 and then finally we've got minus 2 being multiplied with minus 2 lambda there okay and this should equal 0 so if we expand the bracket here we've got 5 plus lambda Expanding this one gives us plus 16 lambda minus 12. And then here we've got plus 4 lambda, and that's going to equal 0. If we gather up our terms for lambda, we've got a total of 21 lambda. And then we've got 5 minus 12, which is minus 7. Add that to the other side, and you're going to have that equals 7. Divide both sides by 21, and it follows that lambda equals 7 over 21, or basically a third. Now all I've got to do now to get the coordinates of P, find x1, y1, z1, is I can substitute lambda equals a third into each of these equations, 1, 2, and 3. So if I sub lambda equals a third into 1, 2, and 3, then I'm going to get the coordinates of P. So if you put one third into here, 9 plus a third gives you 28 thirds. And similarly, if you put a third into 13 plus 4 lambda and into this one here, the other coordinates come out as 43 over 3 and then minus 11 over 3. And there's your coordinates then for P, right?